that's not too bad. There we go. Okay. Well, the day has come to do all the prep work to drop our engine and transmission on our 86 Carrera. So we have a lot of steps involved, but one of the first things we have to do is to drain the oil. And I just don't like doing that on a cold engine. It just doesn't seem to get all the oil out. So one of my first things I'm gonna do is just take the car out for a little tootle and drive around a little bit just to get it warm. And then we'll come back and we'll start in on the whole process and drain the oil and all these different steps that we have to do. I'm not sure exactly how long all all this is going to take. I hope to get it done in this video, but we'll see. So, all right, let me go ahead and take the car out and I'll be right back. You know, I just thought about something while I was out driving. I also need to drain the transmissions oil as well. Now, before we get started with pretty much anything on the car, I want to disconnect the battery. So I'm gonna pull the negative terminal on the battery, which is underneath here in this car, right here. And it's a pretty simple deal. It's uh, 13 millimeters. So we're just going to loosen this guy up and pull the negative terminal off. Okay. Take that guy off and put it aside. Now, another thing that I think is a really smart thing to do, I read it in the, in the book, is to go ahead and pull the fuse for the fuel pump. And the reason is because there's gonna be times when you're kind of dinking around with the car and maybe you want to, I don't know, do something, maybe you wanna run a window up and down or whatever, and you go to turn the ignition on to do that. If you've got the fuel system apart, which is something we'll have to do in order to pull this engine and such, then that fuel pump's gonna crank up and fuel's gonna go everywhere. So that would be really, really bad. So we just go ahead and open our fuse box here. Now I've already looked, this is kind of confusing the way this thing, whole thing is set up. But it's, it's fuse number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one here, it's a big 25 amp fuse. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that guy out. That should be a lot safer if we ever end up turning on the ignition and not really thinking about it. All right, so let's get to draining the oil. I'm going to start with draining the actual oil tank on this thing. 911s are funny. It's these air-cooled cars are dry sumps. So we've got a drain on the engine and we also have an actual oil tank over here. So I'm going to start with the oil tank. I've got one of these cool Neato Magneto quick drain things. It's pretty simple. So all we have to do is pull our little tab forward and then rotate this guy down. And there we go. And that's all we have to do. It's super easy to drain this. So we'll let that guy go for a little while. The next thing we're gonna do is drain our engine sump, which is this bolt right here. It's 15 millimeter. There we go. Okay, so just wanted to loosen it first. And we'll go ahead and pull this back. Okay, here we go. That's not too bad. Now I wanna make sure we get the vast majority of the oil out. So we're gonna take a little break and let these guys drain. And then we're gonna to get to the transmission and drain that. The drain for the transmission is pretty simple. It's just a, a 17 millimeter hex that goes up in here to take this plug off. Now, normally when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you've got your uh, plug that you put the oil back into loose as well, because the last thing you wanna do is drain all your oil and not be able to put it in. But since we're going to take this out and we're taking it to the shop, I'm not gonna bother with that because I know that we could get it back off. So not a big deal. All right, so we just crack this guy loose. Okay, it's just nice and loose. And we can pull our oil tray back here. And down it goes. Now we're somewhat looking at the color of this as well. It looks really good color wise. Now here's an important thing. So this has a magnetic plug on it as well. And look at the little bits in there. I don't think that's too awfully bad to be honest, but there are, you know, a few little iron filings on this. So this is something I'll want to take a picture of. And when we take the, in, the transmission down to get it rebuilt, I'll make sure that the rebuilder has a look at this just to make sure. And if that's normal, everything's great. 
fabulous. All right, well, we've got to wait for this to drain as well, just like we did with the oil. I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of this. Now, one of the big tools I'm going to be using when I'm doing this whole job is my little portable camera. Obviously, we're filming this, so that super duper helps. But I like to use my little portable camera and take some weird angles and stuff just so, as we're disconnecting things all over the car, just so I've got a visual. I'm like, oh, crap, how did that go back together? Man, man, man. I'll have those photos and they are invaluable for hooking things back up and for documentation bits like this as well. You can use your cell phone, use whatever's available. I don't particularly like to use my cell phone when I've got oil all over my hands. All right, so we'll let that drain. Well, we just have the smallest drips. Let me go ahead and throw this guy back in. I'm not going to super tighten this guy, just cinch it. There we go. Now over here on our tank drain, this is super duper simple. You just move this guy up here and snap it back so it's locked and that's all we have to do. That is super duper simple, I love that thing. Now the next things we need to remove are two oil lines. One is this big rubber line here. You want to inspect this line. I think this line was replaced not too long ago, but it should be fairly soft, should be very pliable and not feel hard and crunchy at all. If it does, you're gonna to have to replace it. The next thing we need to break loose are these guys here. So this is an oil return line and this is stationary and then this guy will sort of rotate over the top of it. sorted. What I'm going to do is go through a bunch of other things that need to get done. And since we're dropping the transmission as well as the engine, there's an additional set of things that need to get done. So I'm just going to kind of work my way through here. Obviously this anti-sway bar has to come down. Just connect it here and here and over here is our clutch cable and we're gonna have to get that guy off there. So we've got our heater hoses up here that have to come off and then up here is the solenoid for the starter. So the battery line is this guy here. That big guy has to come off as well. And I forgot about one thing. There's a ground strap up here as well that has to come off. We have our axles have to come off. So all of these have to come off. I did the CV boots on this car so they shouldn't be too hard to get off. And I'm sure there's a few things I might have forgotten but well I'll keep working through it I'll keep going back and forth with the list of things that we need to do Listen this guy up sure that. There it goes. Underneath here there's a wire underneath here that needs to be removed as well. It's just the reverse switch and it's just a little plug. So those guys are off. There we go just like that. That guy's got to come off. Now notice there's a little rubber gasket up there, so you want to kind of keep that in mind. It was up there. Thing. Now we can get this guy off pretty easy. There we go. Pop. Off it comes. All right. So here's our uh, clutch arm and Omega spring, but it's all very dirty and we're going to have to clean all this. 
I ran out of time the other night working on the car, and then I remembered we still have a couple of things to do underneath the car. So let's get to those today. These CV joints have to come off, and I forgot to get them off. That's all right. I'll go ahead and pull them off. I still have the car in gear, and there's another thing we have to do as well, which is to discouple the shift shaft from, this, from the shift coupler, which we have to do from inside the car. But I want the car to, I want to do that last because I want to be able to shift and, and maybe put the car in neutral and all that sort of stuff. And for these, I need them locked so that I can get these off. So don't really even need to go anywhere at this point. Okay, great, that's that. Well, now that I have this axle loose, let me show you something. I think we may have to take the entire thing out. I don't know, but let me just show you something. So there's our axle out, right? And this is where it went in here, but look up above it. See the starter up there? And then see the axle? So I'm not sure we're gonna be able to move this out of the way enough to get around the starter, maybe. I don't know, we'll have to see. But if I do have to take it out, it's not bolted like this actually on the outboard side. There's a axle that's actually bonded to it. So you have to take the wheel off and pull the center axle out. And this guy will just slide out on a spline. Over on the other side, it looks like we've got plenty of clearance up there. So we'll be fine. We don't need to pull the axle completely out on this side. Just over here. Okay, there we go. So before we can get this thing off, I just, I wanna be certain that I chalk the wheels. Just in case, I know the handbrake is on, but we have our CV joints removed from the transaxle. So having it in gear is not gonna do me any good. So anyway, the chalk should help. All right, so to get this bad boy off, this thing is huge, right? It's 32 millimeters and I have my breakover bar, but there's no way this is gonna be long enough. So <laughs> this is one of the most useful tools. This is actually the handle off the floor jack and they're hollow in the end and they make really good extensions. So if you don't have a big piece of pipe, this thing works great. All right, let's get this guy set here. There we go, that looks like a good spot. Grab our jack extension. All right, here we go. And this takes an enormous amount of torque. There it goes. Oh, I just needed a little bit of friendly convincing. Okay. Okay. With the bolt good and loose like that, I'm gonna leave it on just a little bit. If it does come loose, I just don't want the whole axle assembly just falling out on its own. So I'm gonna hit it a few times with a plastic hammer just to loosen it up there and we'll go under the car and remove it. There it goes. I'm gonna leave the nut on just a few threads just until we get the car up all the way. Last thing, I, like I said, I want is the axle falling out on its own. That would be awful. So right before I pull it, I'll go ahead and pull the nut off the rest of the way. There we go. That's about as far in as it's going to go. Let's go ahead and get the car up and get the axles out. All right, I'm gonna remove our nut on this side. So I've got our big nut off. Let's go ahead and woggle that guy out and see if we can get that axle out. All right, I'm just kind of wobble this guy out. 
I forgot about something. In order to get these axles out, we actually have to take the shock off. Now that sounds kind of crazy, but that's just the way it is. Now remember with these cars, the suspension is held up by torsion bars. So we don't have a coil over anything. So it's no big deal to really get this guy off. But if I remember correctly, when I pulled it off last time, when I did these CV joints, it will extend down a little bit. It's just kind of a thing. And I think I used a jack to push it up a little bit just to get it lined up when I put it back on. So not the end of the world, but I'll go ahead and uh, pull this guy off. Uh, there we go. So can I ask a stupid question? Yes. At this point, what's holding the wheel on once you take that whole thing off? The carrier, actually. Okay. So the carrier that the wheel that the, the five bolts on the wheel are actually attached to is attached to this guy through the set of bearings. Okay. And then the spline goes through the center, the spline on the end of the CV joint here, and it's what locks into the rear wheel so it can turn it. But the rear wheel itself is its own deal. There it goes. See? Mm -hmm. That's what went on with the shock there. All right, now we can slide our axle out all the way. Simple enough, yes? And there's the spline I was just talking about that goes into the carrier. Our axle CV boots look fine. Uh, a little bit of rust and stuff on these things, but that's about it. So these guys are fine. I'm not going to fuss with them. I'm just probably gonna clean them up a bit when I put the whole thing back together. So I'll go ahead and put this out of the way and we'll get to taking off the other one. On this side, the bolt is got a bit of an interference here with the exhaust system. So I can't get a socket on it either. So I'm just gonna use a big wrench on it, 22 millimeter wrench, and pull this guy off. All right, so looks like we've got a bit of an interference here. I was kind of hoping that we wouldn't have to jack up the car a little bit, but we're gonna have to jack the car up just a little bit, which will drop the suspension down and free this bolt. Okay, there we go. It's pretty cool. Look at that. All right, let's see if we can get that bolt out now. And we can let the car right back down. With our car up just a little bit, it's gonna be easy now that we've got the clearance to get this bolt out. And like I said, we were pretty close as it is. There it goes. All right, we can push that guy out of the way. Lift our axle, and boom, here it comes. We have our left axle out now, and you're probably a stoop watcher would probably say, hmm, I thought you said we didn't need to do that because the, it was only the right one and it would interfere with the starter. That's true, but I got to thinking about it, and if this guy is in and hanging down, sort of like this, and we roll the car back and forth, it's gonna woggle, 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 and there's a possibility it could kinda get jammed up in there, and I might damage the CV joint, and I just don't wanna do that. So, anyway, simple enough to get it out. The only thing I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put those shocks back in. You just sort of push them up, put them right back in, no big deal. I won't you with that. Next, from here, we're going to get into the car and separate that shift coupler. Now on this car, it's right here at the base of the tunnel, so you just pull the carpeting back here a bit. There's a couple of screws we need to take out. See these four screws, Phillips screws? Let's go ahead and pull these guys out. All right, so we can pull our plate off here, and our shift coupler is actually inside this boot. So we'll pull the boot back. Now I've replaced the shift coupler on this car. This is not the original. This is an aftermarket. One important point is you don't want to remove this. You don't want to loosen this guy. This is how your shifter is adjusted. All we're going to be doing is loosening up this set screw here and then we'll just pull the gear shift and separate the two. This Allen, we just loosen our Allen up. We pull it out. It has a little pin in the end of it. That's what locks it into the shaft. So there, there we go. So now we're off. So this piece here is the actual shift rod out of the nose of the transmission. So we'll be very careful about that. As we're pulling everything out, we're going to have to push everything rearward a little bit to get it to clear this. We can put this guy back in here so we don't lose it. You know, as I'm thinking about this, I think I'm going to leave this cover off. I think it'll make a visual access here so we can check this when we're lowering the engine just to make certain everything is clear. So I'm going to leave this guy off and I'll leave my little tray here with it. 
with the screws and that's pretty much it for the underside of the car. Wow, that was really amazing. Franny had a lot of stuff to do on that with draining both the engine oil and the transmission oil, removing the anti-sway bar and the two axles on each side. And there's a lot more work to be done with disconnecting pieces and parts in the engine bay. So you'll wanna stay tuned for that next episode when Franny gets to all of that. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, subscribe subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then you will be notified just as soon as we upload a video. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And once again, we want to give a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. And in the meantime, safe travels. Bye.